Hey, what's up? Although the supply of nursing homes is increasing, as well as the alternatives to get the necessary care at this stage of life, it is normal that our relative prefers to stay at home. In the culture from which I am, which we could call Latin or Mediterranean, it is common, or has been, for descendants to take care of their parents in their homes. But economic development has come hand in hand with geographical mobility, and it is therefore increasingly a challenge to ensure that descendants take care of their parents. We are going to give the keys for those who find themselves in this situation. Sometimes it takes more than a phone call, it takes a little detective work to really know what the situation of our loved one is. He or she may not want to worry us or even be embarrassed to admit that he or she needs help with certain basic daily activities. It can be difficult to appreciate behavioral differences from a distance. How do you know if he she has withdrawn from certain activities? How do you make sure he she is taking the medication well? How do you detect the deterioration of personal hygiene or home care? The fact is that, no matter how small these changes may be, they are crucial for the safety and well-being of our family member. If we have the opportunity to make a visit, no matter how brief, we will be attentive to the following warning signs, hoarding things not taking essential medicines or refusing to seek treatment for serious illnesses, neglect stoves or kitchen fires, poor hygiene, inadequate clothing, confusion, and inability to take care of household chores, malnutrition and or dehydration. These aspects should be monitored on a regular basis, and as long as the situation does not change. So, with the permission of our relative, we can make arrangements with people who see him her regularly, such as neighbors, friends, healthcare staff, relatives, or even postal service personnel. In fact, in certain countries there are state programs to combat loneliness through precisely the post office personnel. Ideally, our trustworthy person should be able to make periodic visits in order to assess the general state of health, the state of mind, and the conditions in which the dwelling is located, with special attention to potential dangers, such as those that can cause falls. For example, it's good to know that many people think that depression in the elderly is a part of aging, as a depressed person may be happy with a phone call or a short visit, but it will be more difficult to hide more serious mood problems during a longer visit. There are issues that are resolved more or less easily, such as getting a new pair of glasses or a new prescription. But in other circumstances a more in-depth visit is required, looking for problem areas. If they cannot be resolved in a single visit, arrangements will need to be made with someone else to finish what remains to be done. Having to make important decisions about the health of a parent who is getting older and lives far away can be very difficult. In order not to complicate things further, it is convenient to express our own concerns and how we feel. No reproaches, no coercion. The priority should be to try to fulfill the wishes of our family member. If it is not entirely possible, we will try to make decisions similar to those we have made in the past. That way we'll make sure we're trying to do what's best for our father or our mother. And finally, Think about the local resources you can count on to contact, if necessary. And that's it for today. In the following video we will see key aspects to provide proper care from a distance to our elderly family member. Thank you very much.